Well, here we are, tip number seven. Spend more time planning, less time gossiping, worrying, whatever. Probably an easy way to say this, guys, is worry about what you can control. To start this one out, I'm going to go back to what we talked about last week. And I think the last thing we talked about last week was organize. You know, we were giving some tips on practice. And the last tip we said, or the last kind of point was to organize your scout team. And when I've been giving this talk and kind of condensing it into one clinic talk, I would roll that organizer scout team as a great example of it takes some time. It's kind of tedious. It feels like you do a bunch of work for probably a very little reward. There's always some kid absent. We talked about all that. But people say they don't have time to do that, but they go in the field house and spend at least 45 minutes before they go home. You know, or, or they get there early to talk. You know, coaches have got to – If you, this is tips to win games. And in full disclosure, for those that are interested in this, tips 7, 8, 9, and 10 are not specific to scheme or on-the-field stuff. You know, the first six were catch punts, you know, third down stuff, on-field accountability systems, chart and efficiency, those kind of things. Today and the next three weeks after this, these are things that are tips that will help you win football games, but they're not going to talk directly about football, okay? We're going to talk about stuff that will help you win football games in tangent, okay? This one, spend more time planning, less time gossiping work. When you have some extra time to work on football and you got time to talk about who's getting a job down the street, and I like talking about that stuff too, guys. But let's spend some time talking about your plan. Your plan. And people that are, you know, religiously listening to this stuff will be familiar with a lot of this tonight. But for those that hadn't, they need to hear. When you're making a real plan, guys, you got to have a vision, methods, and a way to assess it. So, Michael. He's an assistant principal. He's at a school. He's over a certain amount of things. He's under the principal who's over everything. And he's got a certain list of things. So um, whatever Michael's over, he needs to have a vision for what that looks like. Then he needs to say, well, that sounds good. Vision, I'm not trying to insult him by his intelligence, but a vision means what do you think it's supposed to look like? If I'm a football coach, I'm saying, what do I want inside drill to look like? What do I want? Um, all kinds of things. We're going to talk about those in a minute. But all kinds of things. What do you want them to look like? What's your vision for it? What, in a perfect world, what does it look like, Michael, when you're passing out keys? You know what I'm saying? In a perfect world, what does it look like? Testing is what Michael's doing now to give him a little more credibility than just keys. So what are the methods for going about that? Okay. How are you going to get there? That's the part people get lost on, by the way. Nobody has a bad vision. I think ever, I think some people don't really sit down and think about what they want it to look like, but I think most people do. Most people can tell you, hey, this is what I want our team to look like in this aspect or that aspect or whatever. Most people can't really tell you, the people that are struggling anyway, can't probably tell you how to get there. You know, they just want it to look this way. You got to have some methods. And the third thing is you got to have an assessment. You got to say, is this working? Because things constantly change. You know, at one time, Coach Saban's team wanted to run the football, get in the eye, you know, run off tackle both ways and get after folks. And they had some methods to go about doing that. But at some point, they assessed and said, you know what? We need to tweak that a little bit. We need to adapt it for recruit quarterbacks that are different. Um, and so no matter how successful you are, Things are going to change. you got to have a way of how's it working. So we talked about this before, but I'm going to say it again for our mantra, what we do on here, and then I'm going to let you guys jump in. The, um, the vision, you know, vision, methods, assessment. you got to have a plan for everything, everything you're doing. You have a vision, you have methods, you have assessment. So for what we're doing here, what the hell are we doing today? Because we get here, we show up once a week, we sit here and talk, and for anybody that's thinking we do, we don't get paid nothing for this heart. I mean, this is literally pennies. So the vision 
of this Parker Resource stuff is to provide the platform. You know, none of us are coaching right now. We're doing other things, and we like that. We made those choices. But provide a platform for coaches, ADs to, to learn, and we saw a need for that and try to, you know, get, get fill that void best we can. How are we getting there? What's our methods? Podcast, right? Every week, show up here. Books, I've written some books. We got some documents. You know, so that's the methods in which we're going to get to that vision, that place where we're helping coaches and giving all the avenues we can. What's the assessment? Well, for us, it's really pretty simple. If people listen, you know, or if people buy books or whatever it is, we can chart those things. And believe it or not, a few thousand people listen to this thing. So, <laughs> so um, you know, people must like it. So we keep doing it. But if it ever drops, we change our mantra. You know what I mean? So it really, no matter if you're talking about Parker Resources or if you're talking about your weight program or your offense or your defense or your inside drill or Michael giving out those keys, it's still this simple but very complicated. So before we even talk about really what all these things are, which is what I'm going to get into next, let me let you guys jump in. I've talked a lot. I apologize for that. But I wanted to get all that out in. This is what this is about. Don't spend a little less time talking about who's going to get the other job. Or you heard that so-and-so was talking about moving or transferring or whatever. And a little more time with this stuff. Chad, what do what you got to say to bring, introduce this from your perspective? Well, it's the classic of, you know, worry about where your feet are at right now because you're not going to – you're worried about someone else and things you talked about. You're not going to be good at any of the stuff that you need if you want to grow and get a better name for yourself somewhere else. Um, and for the folks listening, you know, they can't see the things on your screen, but things such as – staff organization, practice game, school community, all the different things you have up there. There is so much big picture stuff to discuss within those. And then the finite actual real details of it that have to come down from it. You don't have enough time to really work on all this. It's true. But you mask that by doing other things that you think that's why I can't get to it. I mean, this stuff takes infinite amounts of thought process. Um and you've really got to be dedicated and diligent and disciplined with working on it. And, and you got to find yourself time during actually during early during the day, because, you know, trying to do this kind of real level of thought after practice is not going to be good. Most of the time, that's where you want to hash out ideas that you've had as the head coach thinking earlier in the day and working on these things and then bounce them off of people instead of like you're saying, Chris bouncing off, which player is moving from this school over here to that one? And why can't we get any of that or anything? It's just futile. It's just a futile effort. I'm right. not saying to some degree we're all not gossipy in our own way, but I sure. guess without trying to get too preachy at the beginning of this, I didn't want to sound like I'm about to sound probably, but, you know, coaches are just notorious for gossiping more than they like to admit. <laughs> more than probably yes. some of our uh, – female counterparts know and even understand is uh we got some soap opera gossip stuff in us too um so there's nothing wrong with that to a certain degree but i don't like when people say and i started with the scout teams so let me bring it back to that because i'm talking about there's millions of things that needs plans for now we're talking about big picture plans with this vision method assessment thing but even as simple as your scout team if your vision is we're going to have a great inside dream Part of having a great inside drill is having a good scout team. Part of having a good scout team is being organized on a scout team. Nobody purposely has a, a shitty scout team organization. Nobody does that on purpose. They do that because they don't sit down and take the time to do it. And if you ask them, they're going to say they don't have the time. And I'm saying, do you have time that you can cut into where you're worrying, gossiping? Right. It doesn't even have to be gossiping. It could be worrying. Somebody just sitting around like Flat used to do and be like, oh, God, how are we going to block these guys? Like, I mean, talking about it's not going to make it any easier, so let's just organize this scout team. Michael, what do you got to say about that? I know you're taking notes on how to get these keys more organized, but other than that. Yeah, I wrote down a couple things. I think that, you know, everybody can get better. We all got things we can get better. Um, I think to kind of piggyback on some of the stuff y'all said, like it is, you know, the, the focus on the things you control is, is do the best you can at the job you're at. 
you know, people are constantly worried about what the next step is for them and what they can do to get the head coach job or that coordinator job or whatever. And the thing that you have the most control over is the current job you're doing. So you have to focus on doing the absolute best you can at your current job, which will help prepare you for this job that you ultimately want to get. But I think and to, to, to build off of what we talked about last week, I think this all comes down to like efficiency. You know, I think that's one of, for like me personally, the thing that I feel like I'm pretty good at is being efficient with the jobs that I have to do. So these are the things that the thing that I can control is the efficiency in which I can get things done, which allows me to be able to do more things. Um, you know, I think that that's part of your just organizational aspect like everybody's different in that um, but I think that that is a key component of this and when you have when you're trying to focus on the things that you can control like you know focus on how you can you go through that process if that makes sense yeah absolutely I I think um, a key mistake in planning is I'm just gonna see how many people I can piss off today I guess in this episode but a key mistake in planning is people that use the phrase, well, I'm just not good at blank. And usually right. it feels like that's followed by technology or I'm just not good at, you know, computers. I'm just not good at that. You know, well, no, first off, when you go play a competition where they put a scoreboard up there, you don't ever get to say that. Nobody cares if you're good at anything. You start with zero points. The other team starts with zero points, and we just figure it out over the course of the game. So if you're not good at technology, get good at technology. Something we talk about, all this is off topic. I'm going to come right back. But these people, they get these head jobs, and they want to say, well, I'm new. Like, it's my first year. I'm learning. Like, somebody on that damn team's a senior. They don't give a damn that it's your first year. Correct. You know, like, they're going to put some points up on the scoreboard. You better get a different job if you like the phrase, I'm just not good at. That's why I say I'm going to piss people. I don't mean that ugly, but I do want people. Don't, don't start a sentence with, well, you know, I just don't do computers or I just don't. Then you're go do computers. How hard is that? Me and Michael from Bon Secure, Alabama, we'll know nothing about computers. We're good at computers because we've learned. We like to win. That's how I learned to do all that stuff we put on Twitter. Not because I was some savant of computers or my parents grew up – working in computers or something. No, I like to win and presenting these opportunities help with that. So planning becomes so important and people, people that get that and are efficient. Michael is so right is where I'm going. So I'm about efficiency. And I'm saying we didn't get efficient because of being zapped efficient at birth. That's a mistake. Some people got a more aptitude than others for certain things. I totally get that. But some of the efficiency comes from you figuring out, we got to do this to win. What do we have to do to win? And you got to figure that out. So you got to plan those things. So I know people can't see my, you know, the vast majority of people listen to this on the podcast format. So they're not going to be able to see the screen we're looking at right now. But we've got, a, I basically got a slide that says head coaches need a plan for and it's player development, staff organization, school and community, practicing games, and total program development. And under each one of those is several bullets. And I would say there's probably 20, 25 different bullets on here. And if it was me and I was new, or if I was old as a head coach, I guess, I would take all 25 of these bullets and I would have a vision. I would talk about how I'm going to get to that vision. And I talk about how I'm going to figure out if it's working or not. Vision method is set for each one of these things. So I'll start, and I'm just going to re- kind of run through them. But, Chad, Michael, you guys jump in. Let's talk about some of these. We don't have time to talk about all of them. But in player development, strength conditioning, what do you want your strength program to look like? In a perfect world, what does it look like? How are you going to get there? And then how are you going to know if it's working? So don't say we want a strength program that's all about speed and agility and bending and all this stuff and you never leave the weight room all you do is bench and squat that's stupid that's methods are not matching the vision in that case Mm -hmm. have whatever you want your program to be you say we're going to be some big sum of guns we're going to get after it 
the weight room and we don't care about the other stuff. That's fine. I, I'm not telling you, we're not getting an argument on what's great program or program you ought to use. All I'm saying is whatever your vision for it is, let it match what the methods you're using. And then, and of course, in the weight room, it's fairly easy because you test and things. How do we know if this is working? Or not? Um, what else stands out in that player development column, Chad? Well, I think what, what really stands out to me and, and one of the things that, you know, you, you said we're pissing people off, so I'm going to join that fray but not get too bad. One of the things you always hear people talk about, they always talk about the damn culture. Culture, culture. I always want to talk about culture. Ain't nobody knows what the hell that means either, by the way. But what you have broken down here with mental development is where you actually do that thing. So what do you do to develop this culture that everybody's always trying to look for, talk about? Most of the teams have that good culture is because they whip people's asses. That's where that good culture comes from. Yeah, usually. funny how that culture that, correlates. That, that seems to be the tying about. connection most of the time on it. But the, the ideas of social media, team building, all the things you have listed are having a plan for how to execute those to support your players, to highlight your players, to support the coaches, program, the school, and everything. That's what creates that, that culture. And when you as a coach in today's age do not understand the vital importance of that, you are going to have serious problems with every one of the next columns that come down through there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, um, the player development stuff, strength conditioning, mental, de mental development, player development, which would be things like team building program, social media, having an award system, player leaders, academics, recruiting, and then your team policies, just having a vision for your team policies, guys, we, we could do a whole episode about literally each one of these bullets. So mm -hmm. I don't want this to turn into some really long thing. I just want to talk about planning. You know, so how can you plan? And I'm trying to give some realistic or, or some examples of things you should plan. Uh, talking about staff organization, you know, having your coaching responsibilities written out, what's your vision for them? Your, you know, how you hire, how you develop coaches, how you recruit, how you retain. I'm in HR, so I know all about recruiting and retaining. Um, but it's true in coaching too. Staff leadership, staff meetings, scouting, self-scouting, and opponent scouting. Those are all things that fit into staff organization. And everything, every one of those things I just said, you need a vision. You say, what do I want this to look like? Now, if you're not a head coach right now, you probably do all that right now. I'm just saying if you ever want to be one, these are the type of things you do. Michael, what stands out in those, in that column? I think this is one of the things that people, it's, you know, especially when we talk about like a, football or whatever sport you're talking about, this is one of the things that you don't learn until you become the head coach. Like you, you know, as an assistant coach, these are not things that you worry about. You are somewhat a little bit more involved in the player development. You know, you're one of the guys in the weight room yeah, that's out true. there. You're doing some different this stuff. Is more, that's more of a head coach column. Right. I think this is one of the things, and we've, we've hit this before, that, you know, you don't always, you're not really prepared for as an assistant coach. You have to kind of have that role of head coach when you kind of get into this part. Um, but I'm going to tell you this. There ain't a lot of time to figure it out. No, that's what I say. It, it is unfortunately one of the most important things because it will, if you're not good at it, it will quickly get you fired. Um, if you're not good at developing the people that are underneath you, you know, somebody obviously did that with you, whether you realized it or not, to get you. The to number one way for a head coach to get fired is the assistant coaches. Right. That's the number one way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think this is a huge part of it, no different than, you know, dealing with adults we've talked about before, whether it be parents or, you know, coworkers or administration or whatever, dealing with adults is a thing that will get you in trouble the fastest. Yeah. Um, so you need a plan for those things. I mean, like I said, we can go into a whole episode on many of those. We may use this chart later and make a few months worth of episodes, but because you could get guests on each one of these topics and go into mm -hmm. some serious detail on them, but I just mean I would go into with a plan. So if you're the head coach and you want to talk about why down the street, you know, they got a, a better field house than you or you don't have a field house or whatever, that's fine. Maybe they do. Complain about it once. Let's get back to what's the plan. Out of your plan. control. Yeah. Um, the next column, we got school and community. We're talking about booster clubs. We're talking about parents. We're talking about admin, faculty, staff, other sports 
you know, your community. Uh, these are plans I would have conscious plans for. You know, what what are your parent procedures? What's your boost club fundraisers? What's your ex expectation of the boost club? What's how are you going to communicate with the administration, with involve your teachers, whatever? You need a vision. What do you want to look like? Methods. How are you going to get there? Assessment. I think something like uh, involving your teachers, you know. What's your plan for involving the teachers? We'll say, oh, we want to do this and that. And they'll never do it. I don't really follow through with it or something. Like then if that's your vision then have the methods to follow through for it, put it on a calendar and say, we're going to remind them on this day or that day, you know, whatever. And then afterwards you say, well, it, was that, a, was that worth the effort we put into it? Did the faculty really respond to that? For us, we involved our teachers by letting them pick the helmet stickers. The kids got, for whatever reason, kids like that, teachers like that, whatever kids were acting right. We just asked the faculty, you know, whoever's, and that got positive feedback. I could get the feedback I needed to know that was working. There was other things we did involving teachers that maybe, you know, wasn't as successful. And we did it and was like, well, you know, maybe that wasn't as good. Why not do it next time? So you need a plan. You need some plan. Out. You need a, a vision. Then you need a plan to get to that vision. Then you need to figure out, how am I going to figure out if this is working or not? In practices and games, pretty simple. You got to plan practices and games. But what sta does anything stand out, Chad, on practices and games, or even if you want to go back to the school and community part of things that we need, we would encourage folks as they plan for those things? Well, with, you know, with practice, I think um, it's very important when you talk about yourself as a coach and you're the head coach. And ultimately, if something goes wrong, you're going to get blamed for it. And so you better be very good at having your practices planned. You better have enough detail in them to show what you're doing for player safety throughout your practices and all these uh, these things. And, and that goes back to worrying about things you can control. And when we don't take the time to have a detailed practice plan because we're worried about wasting it on these other issues that we can't have any bearing on or impact on, those are things that could actually get you in trouble one day. And I don't like talking about things that get you in trouble, trying to scare people. It ain't that, but that's real stuff. And well, since you took them that, guys that have fought that and had to deal with it. Since you took that avenue, I'll even take the own field when like, you know, playing your damn inside drill better and pose the gossip. And, you know, I mean, just to get the well, reps. Yeah. Um, Michael getting serious about them keys. Um, All right. We efficiently no, hand out those keys. No keys going to get lost in psychology. <laughs> not not um, because of me. I can't say that. But in the practice and games, if you're – this might be the one aspect for a head coach that they know they got to spend time playing. Mm -hmm. I actually think oh, it's the absolutely. other stuff they this don't is, know. This is correct. the part they kind of know. Yeah, because they, they go to practice every day. They get to do yeah. – these are the things they're doing as assistant coach. They're not doing these other things. They're not going to boost club meetings. They're not dealing yeah. with parents. They're not, how many, you know. How many times do you see coaches complaining about what they don't have, gossiping, worrying, all that? I stuff. think it, it – well, no then, matter how good of a school, it's every school. It's got that some capacity. But, but what I mean – what my finish that statement will be then that same person – doesn't have a great in-game plan, meaning I'm not talking about the call sheet. I mean, the kids don't know where they're supposed to be on the sideline. And, you know, they've got all this stuff. Like, it was a, it was amazing to me. And of all the things I put on Twitter, you know, a few years ago now, but what kind of started this ball rolling was me putting a few things on Twitter when I wasn't coaching or ADing anymore and I was the HR director. And I just put a few things on Twitter that really took off. And it was interesting that, you know, one of the things that really took off early was just having a chart in the coaching responsibilities that showed what the sideline was supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. That was common for me because Sid had kind of did done that. And right. I learned from him and whatever. And the just how many people were like, wow, that was amazing. I never thought to tell. It wasn't amazing to me. It was just something we did. But that does take some forethought to say, well, this is what we're going to do. So, you know, take your – so some people, I think they know they got to spend a lot of time on practice planning. But there's even still things beyond that. That's what I mean, that they're not planning out and they're spending time worrying about other junk and not planning out. Total program development speaks for itself. You better have relations with junior varsity, freshman, middle school, and youth programs. But I don't want to spend much time on that today because every place is so different. I'll just say – I'll just say this. You better have a vision for what you want that JV 
team to look like. You better have some methods of how you want to get to that vision, and you better have an assessment of if it's working. And the same can be said for freshman, middle school, and you. Now, if you're fortunate like I was at Pickens, you can be over all of them, that's great. If you're over two of them, that's great. If you're over one of them, whatever. But you make sure you have a vision, even if you aren't over the middle school team, but you just make sure you have a, your vision is just to have a great relationship with them, just to support them where you can. Okay, then go do that. But how often, guys, do we hear somebody say their vision is to be really good with the JV, but they don't have anything in the practice plan or anything in the coaching responsibilities that would show that they care about the JV? Now, they can say it with the best of them, but there's no meth. That's a vision with no methods, by the way, to use the, today's the terminology of this episode. We've got to do better at that. And it's we talked to Gary Rankin. We talked to Gene Durden. We talked to people on this podcast that won dozens of state championships. And the question that gets on the most geeked up is talking about the damn JV team or mm -hmm. the scout team or something. It's just interesting to me that the people that kind of get that, and then some people act like they're a little too good for that, have a vision for what you want. Every single coach is going to say they want their JV to emulate the varsity, get after it, to be the future, and nobody's not saying that. Who has the methods and the assessment to back that up? So you may have been listening to all this rambling and said, well, I don't want to be the head coach, or I'm not the head coach, or you're half-ass listening now. And you snap back. Because even if you're not the head coach, I wrote down, coordinators need plans, you know, base plans, compliments situational football, you know, all that. Position coaches need plans. Everybody, even if you're a position coach, you're the ninth grade coach, you're the lowest man on the totem pole. Spend less time gossiping and worrying and more time worrying about you. So if you're a position coach, spend some time on your position. Well, how you, you make that position group the best it can be. Let me tell you something. Pretty much every head coach, and I can start for myself. I know I did. Pretty much every head coach that's been worth a damn started out as a dude coaching a position and he was emerging as a successful position, meaning they took their position really serious, maybe even too serious, maybe a little more serious than the other coaches. And that's how they started moving up. Am I right on that guy? Like, so mm -hmm. be one of those guys that makes like the everyday drills, however you're doing your individual, your group periods, you got that shit just locked down, you video and stuff, you're giving notes, you're whatever you're doing, you're getting after. And being a great position coach. If you're a coordinator, do you really have find ways to be unique but be simple, to have a great scouting plan, a self-scouting plan? You know, do you have all this? So all coaches, regardless if they're the head coach or not, I know a lot of that was about head coach. That's why I want to throw this in. All need to be planning, learning more, gossiping, worrying less. What you got, Chad? No, I just – I can't reiterate enough that that's one of the things that um haven't been a very not successful head coach that is that when you have a limited staff to help you how important it is to for those guys to really know what they're doing in their areas and really plan those and and that that that's not a, a knock on any of the guys that worked with me during that time period but i saw how vital that was to the head coach later once i wasn't that and what how important that is um, and how much you can help your organization success by just taking care of yourself and not worrying about all this other crap. That's right. That's right. Michael, you got anything else before you get out to planting them keys and uh, all that other stuff you got going on? Yeah. No, I think that it was just, I mean, it was the same thing I said earlier, like be good at the job you're at. Like that's what, exactly what you were just saying there when you talked about, you know, position coaches and coordinators, like, your job is to be the absolute best D-line coach or O-line coach or receiver coach or whatever it is you do. You know, like you have to bring that passion for it and, you know, make it the absolute best that you can. Michael, bringing that passion, baby. That's right. It was a nice play on Doing that. my right. job. I know. Set you up there. It was soft talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Can't wait to see what he brings next week. 